Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking an updated look at the battle between the GeForce RTX 3070 and Radeon RX 6800. And for this, I'll be looking at quite a range of games, many of which will be recently released titles, and you'll be hearing a lot about VRAM, something that has stirred up quite a bit of controversy over the past few weeks, which is a bit bizarre, as this should be something all gamers agree upon, but of course, no such thing exists. But thankfully, what does exist is today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner, a reliable hosting partner with a passion for IT. Hetzner runs their own high-tech data centers in Helsinki, Finland, as well as German cities Nuremberg and Falkenstein. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing and skilled customer service, Hetzner has also increased its market share both inside and outside of Europe. As one of the leading hosting providers, Hetzner is still innovating when it comes to new products, offering a variety of services. Outstanding self-developed, high-tech dedicated servers such as their recent launch of the EX44 featuring Intel's Core i5-13500 and EX101 using Intel's Core i9-13900. So for affordable approaches to modernizing your IT infrastructure, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so before we get into all the testing, I'd just like to provide some backstory. Back in November of 2020, NVIDIA released the RTX 3070 at $500 US, and at the time this was an impressively fast GPU. I came away from my day one review stating that overall the RTX 3070 is a great value product, though I also cautioned gamers about racing out and buying one, as AMD was set to release their competitor in just a matter of weeks, and that competitor turned out to be the RX 6800, or I suppose the 6700 XT. The 6800 was $80 more expensive, while the 6700 XT was $20 cheaper, so either works for comparison. I also noted that the RTX 3070 really is the new and much more affordable 2080 Ti, with the exception of the missing 3GB of VRAM, and VRAM was something I noted several times in my review, as I was concerned that 8GB at this performance tier wouldn't age very well, but overall, I was impressed with what the RTX 3070 Ti was delivering at the $500 price point, so it was a very positive review overall. That said, a few weeks later, we got the RX 6800, and I noted this at the end of my review. As good as the RTX 3070's performance is right now, I feel even for 1440p gaming, an 8GB VRAM buffer is going to be less than ideal in the not too distant future. It's perfectly acceptable on a $300 US product or cheaper, but $500 is just too much to be spending on a graphics card in late 2020 with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now you also have to remember that at the time, ray tracing support in games was still very limited and most of the examples we had were quite poor. Also DLSS 2 support was also very limited, though I did note that it was a really nice feature. And in short, I concluded my review by saying the following. Personally, at this price point, I wouldn't spend $500 US on a graphics card with just 8GB of VRAM, and that makes the RX 6800 the obvious choice for me. Now, as you might have expected, these comments weren't all that well received by everyone, and the typical mudslinging ensued. A month later, I provided a 40 game benchmark comparing the two, and the conclusion for that video ran for 8 minutes. So it's quite a lot to get through, and therefore I won't go over all of it again but I will provide a link to it in the video description for those who are interested. But needless to say, I was still concerned about the much more limited VRAM buffer of the RTX 3070, commenting that in two years or so, the RX 6800 could very well end up delivering better image quality in the latest and greatest games, simply because it can take advantage of massive texture packs. Well, here we are, two and a half years since the initial release of the RTX 3070, and in the past few months, the cracks have started to show. But that's not to say the 3070 hasn't been an excellent graphics card up until now, as it has, and for the most part it will continue to do so, but it's now evident that the RX 6800 is indeed aging far better, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Now all of the testing in this video was conducted on the AM5 platform using the Ryzen 7 7800X3D with 32GB of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory, using the latest display drivers. There is a lot to go over, so let's get into it. Now let's start with everyone's favorite well-optimized game, <laughs> The Last of Us Part 1. It's fair to say that some optimization work could be done here, probably more so on the CPU usage side of things, 
and some work on the texture quality at the lower settings needs to be done as it really does look great on ultra and high, but performance at least scales well as you lower the quality settings. That said, if you have 12 gigabytes of VRAM or more, 32 gigabytes of system memory and a decent processor, it will play really smoothly using the ultra settings, at least for the most part, and I found the campaign very enjoyable using the RX 6800 on our 7800X 3D test system. At the end of the day, The Last of Us Part 1 is yet another new game that doesn't play nice with 8GB graphics cards when cranking up the visuals. It's certainly not a one-off, and in fact, I believe we're going to see more examples of this before year's end. I also believe if everyone had 16GB of VRAM on the graphics card, there would be very few performance complaints about this title. Maxed out, the RX 6800 is buttery smooth. I mean, just look at this live frame time graph. It is a thing of beauty. Comparing the RTX 3017 RX 6800 using the ultra quality preset, not even a comparison. And that's because while the RX 6800 can deliver smooth playable performance, even at 1440p, the RTX 3070 is a stuttery mess. In this example, both are completing the same benchmark pass following a near identical path, but the footage is well out of sync due to the extreme stuttering faced by the 3070. It's a remarkable difference. Not only is the RX 6800 much faster in general, but the frame time performance is night and day different. But what if we dial down the quality preset to high? Now the RTX 3070 appears to work quite well, though there are still noticeable stutters at 1440p, and this is reflected in our graph as the disparity between the 1% lows and average frame rate for the RX 6800 is 25%, but for the RTX 3070, we see a 46% margin. So ideally, you'd want to run an 8GB graphics card like the RTX 3070 using medium at 1440p and then high at 1080p, leaving the RX 6800 to deliver not only superior performance, but also superior image quality with the Ultra preset. Now, here's a quick look at how these GPUs compare at 1440p using the Ultra preset, and I saw a few interesting things here. Other than the typical stuttering, the RTX 3070 would often crash under these test conditions, and here's an example of that. When the game pauses here, it has crashed. But what I found interesting was at random, I loaded up the game using the RTX 3070 and tried playing at 1440p with the ultra quality settings, and I found the game didn't crash this time, but something was off. The frame rate performance was around 20% better for the RTX 3070 than what we'd seen previously, and I'd changed nothing. However, the reason was quite obvious. Just look at those trees. They're not being rendered correctly, and of course, there still is some frame stuttering issues. So again, running out of VRAM causes all kinds of issues for performance, stability, and image quality. Next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy. And after initially gathering my footage and data for this video a week ago, I had to go back and update it as it seems the game now handles running out of VRAM a bit differently. It's a bit more like what you'd see in most other games, and that means missing textures. But first, this is how the data looked about a week ago when I collected it. Basically, the RTX 3070 was a stuttery mess, leading to unplayable performance and very low FPS figures. But this is how the data looks now after a recent patch. The RTX 3070 is now just 6% slower than the RX 6800, and frame time performance looks much improved. So, wow, Hogwarts Legacy is now fixed for 8GB graphics cards? Well, no. Not so fast, unfortunately, and let's take a look at what's going on. Here's a look at how the two GPUs compared in our benchmark pass at 1080p. As you can see, performance does look quite similar between these two graphics cards. In fact, initially, the RTX 3070 even appears to be faster. And while it's not the exact same pass, and our results seen in the graphs are based on a three-run average, but spot checking the frame rate counter up to this point does give you the impression that performance overall is quite similar. But I'm sure the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you have already spotted a few issues with the RTX 3070. Yes, there is still the occasional jarring frame stutters, but the bigger issue is the image quality. The 3070 is constantly running out of VRAM, and when it does, the game no longer runs into crippling stuttering that lasts multiple seconds. Instead, all of the textures just magically disappear and then reappear at random. Perhaps that's a feature of the game. What you're left with is a flat, horrible looking image and this occurs every few seconds. Even when standing completely still, the RTX 3070 keeps cycling textures in and out of the VRAM, as it simply can't store everything required for a given scene. But okay, what about DLSS, I hear you say? 
Well, if you enable upscaling, so quality DLSS for the RTX 3070 and then quality FSR2 for the RX 6800, frame rate performance is certainly improved, but unfortunately the 3070 still just doesn't have enough VRAM even when upscaling from a 720p image. And again, we see constant popping in and out of textures. Not only that, but frame time performance is much worse on the RTX 3070 when compared to the 6800. We're also seeing stuttering issues. It's just a mess. And again, even when standing still, we can see just how bad the GeForce GPU is here. You can clearly see the rock wall on the bridge, the ground the character stands on, and the hills in the background, all dropping in quality on the RTX 3070, while the RX 6800 remains constant, and again, this is with DLSS enabled. The next step is to dial down the quality preset to high with high quality ray tracing. After all, we don't typically recommend the ultra settings in most games, but even here the RTX 3070 still suffers from regular frame stutters, and in some instances severe frame stuttering, like what we're seeing right now. There's a lot less popping of textures, but still it does happen spoiling the presentation, and simply put, it leads to an unplayable and really unenjoyable experience. Once again, there's a few examples of compressed textures that lead to flat, low detail image that's nothing short of gross. Meanwhile, frame rate performance is typically similar on the RX 6800, but you get full resolution textures with no popping or any other issues to speak of, and no frame stuttering. So dropping down to the medium preset with ray tracing still set to high is a much improved experience on the RTX 3070, and texture quality is no longer an issue, though there is still the occasional frame stutter, as VRAM usage is still right on the edge, and it does occasionally spill over. So with ray tracing enabled at 1080p, the RTX 3070 is at best a medium preset card, while the RX 6800 can go all the way up to ultra without any issues, though the frame rate isn't exactly impressive. Comparing the medium and ultra presets, we can see that in terms of image quality, they are night and day different, at least at 1080p, but the RX 6800 is clearly superior here with sharper, more detailed textures along with better lighting and shadows. This will probably be quite difficult to tell on YouTube with compression and all that, but here's a 200% zoom on the ground textures, and the source footage that I'm looking at here shows the 6800 to be much sharper with greater detail. In any case, I feel this is a pretty shocking result, and worse still, I did tell you back in late 2020 that the RTX 3070 was the GPU to buy if you cared about ray tracing performance and image quality. And I even at times mocked the weak RT performance of the RDNA 2 GPUs, such as the RX 6800. So to find the RX 6800 offering vastly superior performance and image quality with RTFX enabled in modern titles is shocking to say the least. Another new game we have to check out is Resident Evil 4. Now using the ray tracing preset, this sets VRAM texture quality to one gigabyte, and this isn't an issue for the RTX 3070, and as a result, both GPUs delivered excellent performance. However, textures do look better as you increase the texture capacity. It's not worlds better, but they do look better. Sadly though, increasing textures above one gigabyte with ray tracing enabled breaks the RTX 3070 and will cause the game to instantly crash. So here's a look at how the two compare with ray tracing completely disabled, but with the 8GB textures enabled at 1080p. As you can see, the RTX 3070 is considerably slower than the RX 6800, but even worse than that, it still suffers from stuttering issues, and they occur quite regularly, whereas the RX 6800 and its 16GB VRAM buffer is nice and smooth. Now, if we enable ray tracing, but manually limit the RTX 3070 to 1GB textures, while leaving the RX 6800 at 8GB, we find that not only is the Radeon GPU still much faster, but frame time performance is also better. Generally speaking though, the RTX 3070 is okay under these conditions, but the RX 6800 is just much better, it's faster, smoother, and does offer slightly better image quality with ray tracing enabled, which again, is quite a shocking find. Now, Forspoken wasn't exactly well received, and I'd say rightfully so, though like The Last of Us Part 1, it might have fared a lot better if most gamers had more than 8GB of VRAM, which sadly in 2023 they still don't. I'll show you why in a minute, but let's first look at the graphs, which I'm sad to say are actually misleading in this example. Yep, my trusty blue bar graphs are actually a bit misleading in this instance, but we'll get to why in a second. Firstly, using the ultra high preset with ray tracing disabled, the RX 6800 was 10% faster than the RTX 3070 at 1080p, and 4% faster at 1440p. And then with ray tracing enabled, they're basically neck and neck, but there is a bit more to this story. 
So here's how things look with ray tracing disabled using the ultra high preset. Frame rates are decent, not amazing, but probably good enough for most when it comes to a single player title. As we saw in the blue bar graphs, the RX 6800's a little bit faster here, but overall there's really not much in it. Now, with RT enabled, the RX 6800 and RTX 3070 were neck and neck in terms of FPS performance, but there's something going on here, and you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. Yes, once again, the 8GB VRAM buffer of the RTX 3070 simply isn't enough once we enable ray tracing. But rather than stutter like mad, crash or perform poorly, it just fails to load the textures at all, leaving you with a blurry mess. Admittedly, when running around the low texture quality of the RTX 3070, it's not super noticeable, but the second you stop and look at anything, it's just awful. And I do wonder just how many owners of an 8GB graphics card like the RTX 3070 went for the ultra preset in this game and were appalled by how bad it looked, not realizing the textures aren't actually loading correctly due to not enough memory. The game certainly looks worlds better on the RX 6800. Mind you, I'm not saying it's an amazing looking game by any stretch of the imagination. It could certainly be better optimized, but I'm merely commenting that in this current condition, the RX 6800 works really well and the RTX 3070 doesn't. And this has been true for all of the new games we've looked at so far. Okay, so let's move on to one of the best looking games released this year, A Plague Tale Requiem, and we'll start with the ultra quality settings. Here the RX 6800 is 14 to 15% faster than the RTX 3070, which isn't a bad result for the GeForce GPU as the RX 6800 was priced 16% higher at MSRP, so let's just call this one a draw. That said, the game supports ray tracing, and we know GeForce owners love their ray tracing, so let's give that a whirl, shall we? Oh, that doesn't look particularly good. The Radeon RX 6800 averaged 52 FPS at 1080p with 1% lows of 41 FPS, which was very playable, but the RTX 3070 suffered from extreme frame stutters, and of course, things only got worse, or rather completely broken at 1440p. So let's go see what that looked like. First, here's the 1080p pass, and right away, you can see frame time issues on the RTX 3070, whereas the RX 6800 is very smooth. I wouldn't say performance overall was amazing from the Radeon GPU, but it was smooth and certainly very playable, especially given that this is a single player title. Meanwhile, the RTX 3070 suffered from regular frame hitches, and at times this made it very difficult to control a character. But now the real fun begins when we increase the resolution to 1440p. Again, a console like 30fps from the RX 6800 is hardly cause for excitement, but still, thanks to that 16GB VRAM buffer, it is possible to play the game under these conditions. The GeForce RTX 3070 and its mere 8GB buffer, on the other hand, is completely unplayable, and at times, it's nearly impossible to control a character, and in fact, the example shown here is actually quite good. There were times at 1440p where the game completely paused on the 3070 for multiple seconds. And even if we use the balanced resolution upscaling option, the RTX 3070 is still a broken mess. Whereas the RX 6800 is now very usable and really delivers quite an enjoyable experience. The 3070 though, that starts off looking okay, but as usual, it doesn't take long for that limited VRAM buffer to fill up and then things go to hell in a handbasket real fast. We're dropping down below 20 FPS with horrible frame time performance and things never recover. If anything, they continue to get worse. So we have yet another new game that supports ray tracing, but manages to play better on the RX 6800 thanks to its much larger 16 gigabyte frame buffer. And next up we have the Callisto Protocol, and with the ultra quality preset enabled, but with ray tracing turned off, the RTX 3070 was 9% faster than the RX 6800 at 1080p, and 4% faster at 1440p, though in both instances the Radeon GPU did enable slightly better 1% lows. Now, as we've seen a number of times, the issues for the RTX 3070 start when you enable ray tracing. Now, you could claim that the ultra quality preset's a bit too much, but you'd also have to ignore the fact that the RX 6800 is good for 73 FPS, while the RTX 3070 is completely unusable thanks to its 8GB VRAM buffer. And worse still, the 6800 was able to deliver highly playable performance even at 1440p. And here's a look at how these GPUs play at 1080p, and it's interesting to note that the RTX 3070 plays quite well for about the first 30 seconds or so. But over that time, VRAM usage climbs and eventually maxes out the card, resulting in horrible and constant frame stuttering. Then at 1440p, there is no buffer period. Performance on the GeForce GPU is just completely broken from the outset, 
And this is a huge shame because had the RTX 3070 been given 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it would be matching or possibly even beating the performance of the RX 6800. And this really is the takeaway here. We're not going out of our way to break the RTX 3070 and instead pointing out that had it been given more VRAM like it should have been, it would be able to deliver perfectly playable performance under these test conditions in a late 2022 release. Okay, so I've shown you some games where the RTX 3070 falls in a heap, but there are still plenty of new games where it works well, so let's take a look at that, and we'll start with Warhammer 40,000 Darktide. This is a new game that happened to run well on both GPUs, and here we see that with the high quality preset, the RX 6800 is 26% faster at 1080p and then 29% faster at 1440p. So a big win here for the Radeon GPU, but again, the RTX 3070 was certainly capable of delivering playable performance. In fact, if we enable ray tracing, the RTX 3070 makes a mockery of the RX 6800, offering 30% greater performance at 1080p while also achieving 60fps. This is really more what you'd typically expect to see when comparing these two GPUs with ray tracing enabled. The RTX 3070 also works quite well in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, delivering well over 60fps at 1080p, and this is with the ultra quality preset. Those playing the multiplayer modes will likely opt for lower quality visuals for a competitive advantage, and that will reduce VRAM requirements further. Still, the RX 6800 was 36% faster at 1080p and 31% faster at 1440p, so a big win here for the Radeon GPU, despite the fact that the RTX 3070 did work well. Dying Light 2 using the high preset sees the Radeon RX 6800 delivering 16% greater performance at 1080p and 20% at 1440p. So clear wins here for the Radeon GPU, but this game does support ray tracing, so let's go enable that. Using the high quality ray tracing preset hands the RTX 3017 an advantage, though it has to be said that although the RX 6800 is 15% slower at 1080p, the performance overall is very good and certainly playable on the Radeon GPU. The Dead Space remake ran well on both GPUs using the ultra quality preset. We're looking at over 80 FPS at 1080p and around 60 FPS at 1440p. The RTX 3070 did manage to match the RX 6800 here, so that's a great result for the previous generation $500 Nvidia GPU. With the game's ray tracing enabled, we only see a minor hit to performance, and again, the RX 6800 and RTX 3070 are very evenly matched. Fortnite, which uses the Unreal Engine 5, saw similar performance between these two GPUs when using the game's DirectX 11 implementation, and with the epic quality preset, we're looking at strong performance at both tester resolutions. Now, enabling hardware ray tracing with Nanite and Lumen, this handed the RTX 3070 a performance advantage, though without the aid of upscaling, neither GPU was particularly impressive here. Halo Infinite is a game that many of you have complained to me about performance with 8GB graphics cards when using the ultra quality preset, but I've got to say, in my testing, the RTX 3070 seemed to work pretty well. Although the 1% lows are much lower than what we see from the RX 6800, performance overall appeared very good and didn't suffer from noticeable stuttering. Still, I'd say this game is right on the edge with an 8GB card, and I certainly wouldn't doubt that there are scenes that'll cause the game to spill over at an 8GB VRAM buffer. Now I have to admit I haven't really had time to get into Returnal yet, so I'm just using the built-in benchmark for these results, and that's generally something I do try to avoid. But for now, this will have to do. Here we can see when using the epic quality preset that the RX 6800 is around 13-15% to faster than the 3070, making them pretty well neck and neck in terms of value. However, when we enable ray tracing, the RTX 3070 overtakes the RX 6800, providing an additional 18% performance at 1080p and 13% at 1440p. So again, this is more what you'd typically expect to see when comparing the ray tracing performance of an RTX 3070 and RX 6800. Spider-Man Remastered is certainly one of the better examples we have of a well-optimized game, at least on the GPU front. And here we see, even with ray tracing enabled on its second highest level, along with the second highest visual quality preset, both GPUs were able to render well over 100 FPS at 1080p, and we're looking at well over 60 FPS at 1440p. Interestingly, the RTX 3070 was 12% faster at 1080p, but 7% slower at 1440p. But overall, both GPUs did deliver excellent performance in this title. So there you have it, what I believe to be definitive proof that 8GB of VRAM is no longer sufficient for high-end gaming. And to be clear, I'm not talking about a single outlier here in The Last of Us Part 1. There are a number of new titles, AAA titles, that will break 8GB graphics cards. And you can expect many more before year's end, and of course, into the future.
Now, this isn't to say that all 8GB graphics cards are now useless and or obsolete, or that all graphics cards released in the last few years should have had more than 8GB of VRAM. Rather, we're seeing clear evidence that 8GB graphics cards are now quickly shifting towards the low end, and therefore you can now consider 8GB of VRAM as entry level. This then leads to a less than ideal situation for recently released products with just 8GB of VRAM, and this is particularly unfortunate for NVIDIA's GeForce 30 series generation, which saw the release of the $500 RTX 3070 and $600 RTX 3070 Ti with just 8GB of VRAM. The 3060 Ti at $400 was also less than ideal, and I expect the $330 RTX 3060 with its 12GB buffer to age much better. Really, the only Ampere GPU that could justify being paired with just 8GB of VRAM would be the RTX 3050. And look, it's the same story with AMD's Radeon RX 6650 XT and 6600 XT, though fortunately for most of its life, the 6650 XT has been selling well below the $400 MSRP, and in fact has retailed for less than $300 US. Meanwhile, the Radeon RX 6600, which we've been recommending ever since it was discontinued to just over $200, probably gets away with having just 8GB of VRAM, as it was never considered high-end to begin with. It was very much low mid-range towards entry level. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, and I really want to be clear about this, it comes down to the price of the graphics card. And this is why I've been so critical of NVIDIA's decision to pair the RTX 3070 with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Even today, you can still expect to pay around $500 US for a 3070, and that's a ludicrous amount of money for an already outdated product. Moreover, for the same money, you can buy an RX 6800, and while I'm not wrapped with that product at $500, it's a significantly better buy than the RTX 3070. Now, having said all of that, I want to make it clear that graphics cards with 8GB of VRAM are still very usable and will continue to be for some time to come. But as I said, it's very much an entry-level capacity now, especially when it comes to playing the latest and greatest AAA titles. For multiplayer gamers though, the 3070 and other high-end 8GB graphics cards will continue to deliver the goods, as games like Warzone, Apex Legends, Fortnite and so on are typically played with competitive quality settings which heavily reduce VRAM consumption. As for the Radeon RX 6800 versus GeForce RTX 3070 battle, it's becoming increasingly clear that I was right to caution viewers about spending so much money on a graphics card with just 8GB of VRAM, and that within a 2-3 to three year time frame, we would see games that heavily favour the RX 6800, and I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd end up being quite this right. And by that I mean I didn't expect that we would be faced with a situation where the RX 6800 is able to deliver better ray tracing performance than the RTX 3070. That is pretty crazy. It's also super disappointing when you realise that in just about every ray tracing enabled scenario that we covered in this video, had the RTX 3070 been paired with 16GB of VRAM, it would have been faster than the RX 6800. And that is a really disappointing realisation. But anyway, what's the goal here? What is the goal of this content? Is it to simply tell you that I was right? Well, no, this isn't one big long I told you so to r slash NVIDIA. Rather, it's an attempt to raise awareness, educate gamers about what's going on, and encourage them to demand more from NVIDIA and AMD. But really, it is NVIDIA who needs to improve the most here. But of course, we will see what AMD does with their more affordable RDNA 3 GPUs. And if they're thinking about pairing any cards around $500 with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM, they can expect a very poor review from us, so hopefully that won't be the case. Moving forward, 8 gigabytes of VRAM should be reserved for sub $200 products, or ideally sub $100 products, neither of which appear to exist anymore. In fact, 12 gigabytes of VRAM should be the new entry point, with 16 gigabytes being low end to mid range and 24 gigabytes beyond that. This is what gamers should now be demanding from AMD and Nvidia. Anything short of that should be unacceptable. There's really a lot more that we could discuss here, but I think this video has run for long enough at this point. Uh, I think I'll just read all of your feedback in the comment section there, and then perhaps that will warrant a replying to comments episode. So that's going to do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this one. It was a ton of work. Thought a lot of interesting information there. And yeah, if you did like it, you know what to do. Also subscribe for more content. As I said, there's almost certainly going to be a follow-up to this. 
I can basically guarantee that. And yeah, this is something that we will monitor going going ahead. There's a lot of interesting games coming up this year, and I think eight gigabyte graphics cards, even with high quality settings, are going to struggle. And yeah, we'll see a lot more of that, I'm certain. But anyway, if you want to support the channel more directly, work like this, then we have Floatplane Patreon. You can check either one of those out. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give you access to stuff like behind the scenes content, monthly live streams, Discord server, Q and A. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Check it out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video all the way to this point. Amazing work. Good job, you. And I'll see you next time. Also, I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.